Hello, I'm Kiss Blue, and I'm with Gengar and Swi uh, Dwiggy. I almost said Swiggy. That's something completely different. Uh, and we are Team Foul, or Honorary Foul, as the case may be, uh, here with the Rel 9B and 9C recap. Did I miss anything? <laughs> oh no, uh, that was everything. Hello, oh. people. Hello. I am, I am the High Lord of Salt. I took over this title. I am now King Salt. I mean, you're the original, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, Vinajot actually won that title whenever there was a um, Most Salty Player award back in the day. Okay. He was able to top me. Okay, but you're the original foul brand salt king. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, if we want to get really technical, there's literally an REL player whose name is High Lord Salt. So yeah, that's what I say. That's just the <laughs> title. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, let's look at the, the divisions of nine B. We have some good news actually for them. Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, they have fewer. Um. They have fewer admin slots now. Yeah, it's because two, mm -hmm. the, uh, two teams joined, so they actually are starting to mm -hmm. fill out the yeah. missing teams. The admins are working on it, so sorry mm -hmm. if it's just going to take one or two more weeks, but, you know, it takes time. Yeah, so specifically, uh, there was one team which was added for week five, and we'll get to them when we do. Uh, there was also one team that was added between week five and six. They did not play during week five, but they will be playing in week six. And we'll also mention them uh, when we look at, we're looking at teams, but obviously they won't come up in the uh, recap. Yeah. So, uh, so, having said that, let's look at the first team. Uh, that would, of course, be uh, the first team, the first game, rather, which would be Click Click Splat versus the Hostorf's Homewreckers. So a typical uh, case of uh, lizards versus uh, trolls. Uh, the wiki, what do you think about this match? If you look at it first sight. Uh, so what I saw on there was uh, basically a lot of hurting. So I'm actually looking at it from the the league manager, mm -hmm. and from what I see there, there was maybe five players left on the pitch for the Lizardsmen's. Uh, the Dead Croxagore. It's horrible. You never oh, yeah. want to see that. Uh, thing, yeah. His best Saurus is, or I say best business, the only one that's level three is mng would for the next game. He had three more badly hurt. Uh, luckily, his Agi-5 Skink survived um, yeah. the punishment. Mm. And uh, other than that, he should have an, a, an okay team for next week, I'm assuming. I don't know who his next opponent is. Hopefully, this is one where you hope it's a, an admin mm -hmm. game. Uh, I so can answer that. Back. Uh, the next opponent for Click Click Splat is going to be uh, the Werewolf on Wall Street. So, uh... <laughs> it's an economic team. It likes yeah. to claw. Oh, yeah, more claw. <laughs> yep, pretty much. But uh, <laughs> I think this is actually a pretty interesting game. Uh, because the block, the number of blocks is actually quite low. Um, it's 32 to 31, which this level of injury, that's like crazy low. Um, the home record is only inflicted six of those removals. Like, of the two injuries that were inflicted, uh, no, sorry. Yeah, of the eight injuries that were sustained by Click Click Splat, only two of them were inflicted by the dwarves, by the chaos dwarves. So that means that there were six injuries that were either fouls or trips or surfs or something like that. <laughs> oh, wow. Self-inflicted. <laughs> 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 so um, that means that I'm Corrigan is playing a team of emo lizards. <laughs> and uh, speaking of uh, fouling, there was one serious injury suffered by the Kestorvs as well. One of their two DP hobgoblins suffered a minus strength. So they've oh, lost yeah. half of their fouling force, which, you know, we at Team Foul will take very seriously. Just, just, just kill still keep him in the field and use him like that minus strength isn't going to stop him from doing his job. That's true, but you don't want to have him as a liability. But, I mean, 
You never know. On cast orders, though, know. I don't think you're keeping a strength busted player. Yeah, I think he fired them already because he's not there anymore. Mm hmm. Okay. Let's move on. The next game is. Uh, let's see. I need to make sure that I have one that's not. Uh... Ooh, you're going to like the next one. Wait a second. Wait a second. Did it just... When the hell did they do that? I backed out of the match result, and it didn't put me back to the current uh, match day. They must have added that in the patch. Hmm. Well, that's nice. Uh, anyway, uh, Mean Green Boys vs. Wolf of Wall Street is a admin game. Of course, yes. the Gerber Admin Squad was an admin game. Tenacar Tyrants is an admin game. So, not an admin game. Gobstoppers draw against Nurgle. I love it! <laughs> the Gobstoppers are really on a streak if you look at their like, winning, draw, loss. Mm -hmm. like, they're really taking names. Yeah. Only, what, 18 armor breaks, 4 expulsions. <laughs> it definitely chide. This was a fun game. This yeah. is a goblin team, which I'm pretty sure has a positive record. Like, I don't think... They've gotten a lot of draws, but I'm pretty sure they've won more games than they've lost. Uh, Although, to be fair, some of those games are admin wins. They are 2-2-1. Two, two, and one. So, yes, they have a positive mm -hmm. record right now. Ravenbow is proving to everybody that he loves goblins. Mm -hmm. With a passion. Well, I think everybody knew that Ravenbow was uh, capable of playing pretty much any team at this point, but... He always said his goblins were mm -hmm. one of his favorite. Yep, so, uh, notably, the goblin versus Nurgle match had more blocks than the lizard versus Chaos Dwarf won. Uh, 39 and 36. Uh, 39 and goblins. Tons of KOs, so all their, most of their moves in this game were KOs. One kill inflicted on each side, which uh, surprises me. I didn't notice that in the match report, so... It probably wasn't anything important. Yeah, it's a, a loner rotter and a rookie goblin, so mm. I don't think either teams were upset about it. Yeah, that that would do it. Neither of those is particularly notable. Um, the, one of the first games, the Robberhood actually lose, though. Like, they have been winning every game so far, and now that's like, you know, the first setback. No one can stop the goblins. <laughs> Wouldn't it be, oh. actually no? Flamingo took back the thing he said about eating eating his hat, didn't he? Because uh, <laughs> I feel like Rivenbo has a real chance of coming in of getting in playoff contention. Yeah, he already <laughs> did it back yeah, last season. Like he wasn't going to bet it with Rivenbo mm -hmm. running around with goblins. Uh, yeah. Uh, the only thing I really want to add for this game is that are the uh, inducements from Rivenpo. He had two star players, namely Fungus and Ripper. Uh, and I'm pretty sure he had full bribes. Well, that's three of them. Yeah. Which, you know, goblins, that's sort of to be expected. Anyway, next up is uh... Once again, that's the wrong one. Banana Bulls versus Red Detectors. Yep, that's the one. Uh, and Twiggy, the... I thought you saw this one, or...? Hmm? I thought you oh. saw this match, Twiggy? I did. I saw at least the last half of it. So uh, they played, I think, on Monday uh, with... Uh, and Herringsword covered it when he was doing his Monday Night Rebel stream. Um, it it did not go very well for the Rat Attacklers. Uh, or Rat Attacklers. Um... They, it's if you look at the the match report, six KOs, almost none of them came back for the second half, and he just kind of got ran around mm -hmm. circles. It's, it was sad to see, but uh, yeah, uh, he's a he's a new coach and mm -hmm. uh, underdeveloped team, so he can you know get some development, get right back in there. We'll Very new. In morning. fact, this is one of the replacement teams in the division. Uh so. This was a really harsh game, though. Like, no matter how new he was, like, just look at the armor breaks. Dark Alice got 14 armor breaks versus one for this Gaven. That tells the sto the full story right there, I think. 
No, I mean it is nice that he has a MVP in the spawn cabin. Mm -hmm. Because now I think he does have a lot of people who are like one SPP away from leveling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he was given a few uh, a few admin wins to get his team started. Yeah, it's a Greenhorn division, so starting late in a Greenhorn uh, division, yeah, they threw him a mm -hmm. couple admin games to try to keep him get some catch up going. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, well, uh, fifty blocks to twenty six. There were no uh, as, there were no really notable injuries, so neither team. Well, I mean, the Reddit attackers didn't actually inflict any damage, but they didn't suffer any permanent injuries either, which is important. Um, just a lot of chaos. And, uh, yeah, I hope they stick around and that they get a few games under them. That, and, uh, that, uh, and that's actually the yeah. last, the last game that was played that in this division because there were just a, there were just a ton of admin teams. We do have a new team joining the fray, next uh, to the, the backlist, which we saw last mm -hmm. week. So we might want to talk about them. Uh, yes, we absolutely want to talk about them. Let's just see if I can find them. Uh, no, that's Raven Poe. He was here al already. <laughs> He's looking for an excuse to talk about goblins again. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> it. No, I found it right here at coming in at seventeen or thirteen seventy TV. The Norse team, Yeti to conquer. Conquer Welcome spell. back, Iron Master. It's Iron Master! I didn't even realize he was sitting out this season. But uh, uh, he had some real life issues mm -hmm. why he couldn't like join for like the first six weeks. So he now joined up with the uh, you know, one of the open spots basically because mm -hmm. now he has some time again on his hands. And uh this team is like it's not super developed. It's probably at home in the Greenhorn, but like, actually did he play this team in the Greenhorn? Because I feel like he might have. Mm -hmm. No, he actually played in 9D, I think, and got through the first three or four weeks before he was like, oh, I got to stop playing. Oh. Uh, and dropped in 9D. And then he was like, hey, can I come back? And we were like, well, you've already played some games and we've already filled up spots. So let's just throw you in the Greenhorn division. That's, okay. And you'll just get a zero and four to start. Yeah, because so. his development is actually like pretty close to where it should be, I think, had he started with a Greenhorn team in this division. I mean, he this uh, this he does have like some really nice development, like on his Yeti with mm -hmm. Bo. That's a nice start. The elves both have uh, the first level of block, which is really nice, and we have a killer with mighty blow piling on, which is really something you want to have. Mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, he is a little. He has played a few more games than the other ones in this division, I think. But it's he is still close enough that I think it's fair. Uh, but yeah, like. This is a nice looking team for this TV. Yeah, especially getting a block Yeti from the start. Mm -hmm. it, oh, geez. That's nasty. Mm -hmm. It is. And he has already played yeah. his game for week six, by the way. We're not going to talk about how that turned out, but just keep in mind, he has the development from that game. Oh, okay. I didn't know what the what he got new from that one. Um, so we'll have to keep uh, so shut... about it when we will look at the elite bolts. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. So uh, he has two tackle linemen, which seems a little bit weird to me. DP linemen, which you know is essential. Um, he has the dodge runner, which is interesting. I think he went for tackle linemen because he wants to have some tackle moves just on the steam, just to have it. I can understand that, but I feel like, like you piece, don't. Basically. I... I feel like you probably don't get the second tackle lineman, if that is your logic, though. I mean, what is also fun is that later on you can get um, Fend. Yeah, that's so true. Really, like, complete lineman for a very cheap mm -hmm. uh, price. It's basically a dwarf with armor value 7. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, he doesn't have... He only has one Berserker, and he has no... Wait, no, Norse don't get throwers, do they? <laughs> no. Well, they they do, but most people don't take them. Mm. Yeah, nobody takes the throw. It's a bad, bad idea. I mean, it's free leader access. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, he he also has only one Berserker, though, so he might be just trying to play TV efficient 
by going heavy on linemen. Very presumably, yes. Or maybe it died before he joined the, the league, you know. One way or the other. No. I think, um, knowing the story of uh, the Berserker, I think he did die. And he was actually looking for money to replace it, but didn't mm -hmm. get it yet. Hmm. I'm just oh, but that the team looks healthy though. Three deals and pop the carry, not too high TV. Good bench. It's looking good. Le I just am looking quickly at his record. Uh, he did play Greenhorn when he first made this team. He played oh, okay. four matches in season eight or five, not or nine D. This is season eight, isn't it? When did yes, you... it is. Wait. Okay, that's that's weird. Why does he have four matches in a different division? Uh, because he started out in ninety, then had his whole real life thing happen where he had to drop. They filled up his spot with a, a latecomer, mm. and so when he was like, "Oh, I can play uh, false alarm," they're like, "Well, your spot's already taken, but we need people in ninety. But he also got two freebie wins. Which he, I feel like he probably didn't need, looking at the state of his team. Uh, but... <laughs> whatever. whatever. I'm not a madman. I'm just here to talk about I, stuff. I'm not going to complain about it. I'm not going to complain about it. It's going to make some, some good games to watch. And realistically, starting the, the division with 004, he's 005, actually. He's probably not going to be in playoff contention anyway. Actually, uh, I don't know if he did play Greenhorn. This, uh, he did. Six okay. I thought six or 9D was a fresh league. Yeah, I did too, but he clearly played Greenhorn. It's, it's a little weird. Uh, hmm. Okay, so uh, any final thoughts on this team before we move on? Uh, no, like everything has been said about this team already. I'd say let's go to the leaderboard. Uh, well, we still have more teams to look at <laughs> before we do that. Uh, I already talked about the Reddit that team um, last week, though. Oh, did you? Okay, well, I guess I don't need to talk about that one then. I was. <laughs> uh, we should still look at one more team, though. So pick one. Uh, have you guys talked about uh, the Mean Green Boys yet? I don't know. I'm just uh, trying to pick one. I think the Mingini Bose is gone. Yeah. Oh, no. I'll let you guys pick one then. <laughs> okay. Uh, we haven't talked about the Rotterhood, I believe, and they're doing yeah, pretty we well. Have. We have? I think we have very, you know, at the beginning, but, you know, Damn let's it. do them anyway. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. Yeah, no, let's, let's do the Rotterhood. It's not on my notes. My notes say that we haven't talked about them. Uh, so. <laughs> Oh, well. I know I've never talked about him, so... <laughs> Perfect! Let's look, at this. Let's look at this Nurgle team, which has a uh, best to go with edgy help and block right now. Uh, yeah. It's a nasty best to Everybody loves an edgy help best to especially so... if you're not playing it. Yeah, I'm glad that's not in my division. Also, that Beast of Nurgle, I'm glad that's not in my division. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's just got guard, but I hate Beast of Nurgles, so keep them away from mm -hmm. me. <laughs> So, the first thing that stands out to me is that this is an undeveloped Nurgle team with the full roster, meaning it is TV is super bloaty. Yep. Yep. It also means that uh, they're running a 12th player team, so one on the bench, one DP. Mm-hmm. You know, you really don't want to get tired of this. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, like, the level ups he has on his riders are good, but two, he doesn't have enough level ups on his positionals, I think. Uh, it also means they'll be facing a wizard every week. Mm -hmm. of On the bright side, though, is if you can keep people alive, uh, all the TV that comes after this is skills, so it all brings value. So yeah, that is that. that is very true. I uh, I also feel like like if he had one fewer rotter, I would definitely fire all of them because there's still plenty of admin win games in this division. We're starting to get rid of them, but there's still plenty to go. Um. And that might actually be why he has mm -hmm. all this too, is because he's gotten so much money from admin games. If he was uh, had a couple front heavy, mm -hmm. you are right. That is very well. He has had only one. Hmm. So he's just been getting great, uh, 
rolls on uh, earnings. Mm -hmm. Yep. Seems like it. Uh, and you know, despite the bloaty start, he has been performing well. He has only he has not lost a game yet, and his only draw was against the goblins, as we just saw. Uh, so whatever he's doing, he's doing it right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Just thinking about that, by the way, we see that they have four wins and one draw, mm -hmm. which puts them to the second spot right now. Uh, one team doing better than that. Mm -hmm. And it is the Rage Dwarf! Funny enough, with five wins and no losses or draws, he has a dwarf team. That's pretty amazing. Now, yeah, that's really good. Now, to be fair, this one has had two bye weeks. Well, yeah, I okay, can't. But look at the uh, state of the team. Like, two Mighty Blow Slayers, a Mighty Blow Dwarf, and two God Dwarfs. <sighs> Lord Dwarf has strength up and Fast Dwarf has movement up because he's fast. Like, this team is looking real good, even though he only has 9 players. Well, I think he's got an admin game this week, maybe? Or he just got one, so I think he's uh, just got- he dropped some he dudes does have, to... He does have a third admin game for week 6. Yeah, yep. he might have he might have dropped some uh, longbeards knowing he'd be able to afford them if they were at 0 SPP. And uh, just put it all on dudes that need it. And he has had a streak of admin games, like mm -hmm. one, two, this is his third admin game. Mm -hmm. uh, incidentally, so, yeah. the, the teams who have not had any admin games in this division are the Hostorf Homewreckers, who are, uh, let's Three, see, in fifth oh, currently. Two, in fifth, yeah, it's nice. So they're, they're doing pretty well. Uh, as well as, well, the two new teams, of course, and the Pananimals, who are currently sitting in 10th. Yeah, they sort of need their... Uh, or 7th, actually, because they're tied. In 3rd and 4th place, we have Mysterious and Cunning Fox Pup, with the elements of style and werewolves of Wall Street. Mm-hmm. And, so uh... expected them to be there. Mystay has played his Week 6 game. So, it, there's potential that he'll drop from his current position. Yeah, since it was a loss, mm -hmm. which is too bad for him, it seems that he will drop down a little bit. Mm. Actually, it was a win. But it, but we'll talk about that next week. Uh, yeah, though, like the, all things considered, this is a pretty close uh, division. It, everything in here is like re really wonky because of all the bye weeks, and but so that makes it a little some of the positioning a little bit weird and unintuitive, but it also makes it especially hard to predict how it's going to end. Like we have sitting in sixth place is the Gad Stoppers. Yeah, I mean they're doing well, and I mean why shouldn't they? We nearly had a Goblin team win the. Um... Ripple Cup at one point. They were in the semi-finals, I think. Like, you know, we had teams can go far if they want. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to be my pick for the the uh, Stunty Cup winner this year, <laughs> actually. Uh, you just, yeah. You just gotta have dives. It's the only thing you need. Uh, taking away the one... Taking away the one admin game, because I don't think those are counted, uh, Ravenpoe currently has... Uh, it would be five points in the Stunty Cup race. Which, I mean, I haven't looked at every single Stunty team, but, like, that's yeah. a pretty good record. I think they're leading with that. Mm hmm Like, there's... Show about that. If they're not leading, then they are right behind first place. <laughs> I mean, there's one thing they are leading with right now that's the most expulsions in the Rebel like, yeah, most expulsions, the little um, challenge of the cup mm -hmm. that they're doing. Um, it's six goblins at the top with Raven Bro solidly feeding them. Yeah, like, it's hard to keep up with goblins. Also, it's hard to keep up when, when Rumblebee plays badly and you don't get to field all of your secret weapons. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Yeah, though. Um, I think. I think there's a good chance we will see Ravenpoe in playoffs in the Stunty Cup, probably. But who knows? Maybe they'll shoot at the top of the of this leaderboard. 
It I would love a stunty team to win a division and get into the playoffs without the stunty cup. That you, would be amazing. You and I both. Plus, if they do do that, then that means a different team, stunty team gets the stunty cup. Mm -hmm. So two stunty teams in playoffs. <laughs> it would be the best. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else? Any final thoughts on 9B? Uh, no, I mean, the division is slowly, steadily growing again, so we will have more things to talk about in the future. But now, since we have a guest from this division, let's move over to 9C. Let's do that indeed. Uh, right here. First game of the week is Economies of Scale versus Dead Presidents. expulsion huh. I this mean this game doesn't really look uh, so like um, uh, well, it's only 33 versus 30 blocks and only 10 armor breaks versus 8 armor breaks yeah it just seemed kind of like a you know a typical control game where the lizards were able to keep control of the pitch and then use the skink speeds to run mm -hmm. circles around the undead yeah and uh, actually they're, the skinks don't actually have that much ball possession either, so... So, I'd say this looks to me like they actually scored pretty quickly when they did. A second to score, basically. Mm-hmm. Pretty much, oh, yeah. There have been many sacks in this game in total. Because it's only 30 and 30 ball percent um, possession, that means it's like 40% of nobody actually having the ball in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and uh, judging by the blocks, there was no big scrum for the ball either. It was just a lot of defensive play. So uh, you know mm -hmm. that happens. It's not a bad, not a bad game. Maybe not the most interesting thing to watch, but definitely worthwhile to play. The next one is interesting. Dorks of Dungan versus. Hey, Dwiggy. <laughs> Crawdads yeah, Ideco experience. How am I supposed Cra to say it? It's it's a Crawdads Ideco experience. Crawdad. Yeah. Okay. Or if you're from the south, it's Crawdad. Well, Crawdad. Gengar's first language, I'm pretty sure, is not English. Like it, <laughs> it would be it would be odd if it was, considering where you where you live. Uh, and I just have a problem talking. Good. Um. <laughs> We make up for a very fun cast for people to understand, I think. Like, what the fuck did you say? So, uh, yeah, uh, zero, 0 9 armor breaks to 10 in the Chaos Dwarf versus Human matchup. Uh, 52 blocks versus 48. So, this one had plenty of blocking, just not a whole lot of armor breaks. Or I mean, at least I not a lot of it, it removals. I mean, it's this, I think, that we love Swiggy, you know, build story here because he actually played the game. Oh no, I'm not Rock Lobstrosity. I don't know where that came from. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I was just trying to throw him under the bus so that we could get someone else to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, so I didn't actually see this game, but I did listen to uh, Rock Lobstrosity talk about it in chat after it was done. And uh, he basically said he had to fight hard to make it a 0-0 zero -zero draw, so I don't know what happened at the end of it, but hmm. it might have been a hero block at the last second to, you know, get rid of the potato ball carry or something like that. But... Uh, well, it does look like the cast dwarves had fairly good ball possession. So, it would be believable to me that they were playing defensive, but they weren't moving down the field. So they controlled the ball pretty well, but they were going by the statistics. My assumption would be that they were not going down the field fast enough in order to score. So he successfully stalled out, is my presumption. Yeah. Speaking about a successful game, by the way, uh, Dwiggy, I see that you have a 3-0 victory versus the Fat Earthers. Yes, so that happened. Um, it was a lot better than the last time I played a stunty team in this division. I'll tell you that much. Um, but kind of everything that I wanted to happen, happened. Um, I failed a few things from here and there, but... Uh, Coming into the game, I 
had the decision of either getting the third reroll or my fourth blitzer. And since I only had one dodge, I went up for the third reroll and it, it helped me out. And uh, I was able to, you know, dodge through the lines, hit the knoblars that had the ball and just mm -hmm. take the ball and run away with it. And I'm surprised that all this mighty blow just didn't do anything to you. No, I basically gave him one to two hits per turn. Um, but yeah, I am very, very lucky that all that mighty blow did not actually yeah. hurt me permanently. Hmm. Well, I mean, that's a good result for you and a little bit less good result for our good old friend, the real denizen. But he did uh, level his first ogre uh, in this game. So uh, yep, I, be is that. I believe he took break tackle. Yep. Then... Let's move on to the next match, which is the memo. Jesus. The mammals of unusual size versus Wood United. Amazons. Yep. Amazons Blue lose zero versus... to two against Wood Elves. I mean, they're basically Wood Elves mm -hmm. with a GMP3 instead of four. Uh, yep, sort of. Uh, the Amazons, their death was a line woman. They've actually had this a little bit rough because, like, the this team has taken a incredible amount of attrition. Like, it's not in uh, Death Spiral territory, but they've lost a player almost every game. They've they just been have... losing players that they, don't, that they don't need. They do have their uh, Blitzers already mm -hmm. to level up, which is, you know, two passes, and you got lots and lots of uh, level Blitzers, which is really fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, that's the thing. They've been losing a player almost every game, but it's been a line woman almost every game. They haven't been losing any positionals. Yeah, and I actually, I watched the replay of this game, um, and it was unfortunate for the Mammals of the Usual Size that the entire game was in rain. So, oh, without that's... sure hands and having to deal with a, a leap strip ball war dancer, it was just not a pleasant experience. Yeah, but... that's... Uh, Blood Bowl patch also fixed something very um, good about um, Amazons and vampires in general, by the way. I don't know if many people realize this, but the hairstyles of vampires used to clip through their helmets. Oh, they had so did... they had unreported graphical fixes, is what you're saying? Yep, and also um, the Amazons had like their hairstyles sticking out of their helmet, basically. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm quickly checking now if this still is the case, but it seems that they actually fixed it. Hmm. No more hair sticking through the helmet. Neat. That's cool. That reminds me, actually. I need to look through the star players at some point to see, to see if they snuck any new models in. Uh, That's something we should do later. Mm -hmm. I mean, at some point, all of the cha various chainsaws are going to need to <laughs> clear up those skin conditions. <laughs> um... So anyway, as for this game, uh, the Mammals of Unusual Size actually did get a lot of armor breaks. 16, to, 16 armor breaks on 43 blocks, uh, whereas the Wood Elves only got half that amount on 32 blocks. Uh, they had good ball possession so as well, so it really does look like they just struggled to score at the end. Yeah, and there was a uh, a couple, you know, one in thirty sixes that mm -hmm. happened on the uh, on the mammals unusual side uh, sizes side too that I saw. It was unfortunate. The one thing that I would have saw that I would have changed. He did have a chance to score at the end of the I think the first half, but he tried a handoff in the rain to somebody oh, without catch. Yeah, uh, and that didn't go out too well for him. But I, I could see uh, do I could see doing that if I already was one up. But definitely, if it's my first touchdown, I'm not going to take that risk. Yeah. Okay. Well, what's the next game? Uh, it is All Orc No Play versus Nerves. And uh, oh. Nerves won, 1 to 0. Uh, their death was a white. The All Orc No Play also got a move bust on a black orc. Uh, the death was a ghoul, actually. Oh, did did um, I say white? Yeah, no, it was a ghoul. Yeah. It was a rookie ghoul, too, so it's mm -hmm. not a huge loss. Yeah, those things die. They, it happens. Those things Unfortunately die for all orc no play, though, he's got two MNG black orcs for his next game. Uh, that unless he, he can replace one. 
And uh, one of them is a move best as well, like I said. So probably he does want to replace that one. Yeah. So this is that ZP. Probably a good idea to just go ahead and fire it and get a new one. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Lots of blocking. Not a lot of injuries for the orcs. Tons of injuries for the undead. It's pretty clear how they won this game. They, they handedly oh. won the bash war. <laughs> A hundred total tackles between the two teams. Uh, what well, looks like all the KOs came to nerves. They got five to all works, no play, mm -hmm. zero. Five casualties to one casualty. It seems like they just kind of snowballed it, but I mean, all works, no play got a lot of hits in too. So. It, it's actually impressive they got in this many blocks, considering how much attrition they were taking. Yeah. And... Uh, it's possible that they just took a lot of this attrition near the end of the game, but still, good on them. And you know what? Like, good ball possession for them as well. So, probably they took... I don't know who played fir first, but I would have to... I'm pretty sure that they took most of their attrition on their drive. Because they clearly could not score, uh, complete the touchdown. But they managed to. But it looks like they managed to mostly keep the ball away from the undead. Still, it's a good result from those, which is mm -hmm. really doing well with this team. Big Delaware yeah. really showing why Hundred is such a great team early on. Mm -hmm. Yep, and uh, that brings us to the last match of the week, not kind of the admin match. Of course, that would be Dauntless Unicorns versus Mystery Science Goats 3000! And, and one of my favorite coaches won. 2-0. to zero. Goat Negative Pro! <laughs> there you go. I mean, after uh, a good start and then like a very not-so-good mid-season, they seem to pick up the pace again and they have another win, which is nice for them. Mm -hmm. Now having an extra armed beast. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, they didn't win this from bat the Bash game either. Two KOs on either side, low number of blocks, but they still managed to win 2-0 to zero against Dauntless Unicorns. Um, which, it looks like the pros just couldn't pick up the ball. That's painful for no else, really. Mm -hmm. Being able to pick up the ball on the 2 plus. Yeah, it looks like most likely... I, I didn't watch uh, yeah. any of this game, mm -hmm. but from what this stat line tells me, I think that he scored once, stalled at the end of his drive, like mm -hmm. maybe he kicked first, or he received, scored on turn eight, and then the second half probably got like a blitz or something to allow him to sack the ball carrier real quick and grab the ball and then just stall out again. Yeah, I agree. This looks like a... This looks like a... Raven... Not Raven Poe. Negative pro. Uh, stole the ball really early on in the second half and just kept it. Or the first half, I guess. During his opponent's drive, I should say. Uh, okay. Okay. On that note, let's look at some teams. Okay, so let's start with the elephant in the room. Uh, Driggs. How about you... Uh... We're going to talk about my team? I don't know anything about my team. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, let's have a look at your team. All okay. the boys in the band know how to get down. Yeah, so that is uh, a line from one of my favorite songs from one of my favorite bands. So if you haven't guessed that this team is uh, music themed. Um, so uh, one of my big passions outside of... Yeah, I see it. Yeah, one of my big passions outside of uh, Blood Bowl is music, especially punk mm -hmm. rock and indie rock. Uh, uh, and I was just thinking of a team name. I, we had a Rock'em Sock'em's set at the at work, so I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, sure, that'll work. So, call them that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, when I look at this team, the very first thing that stands out to me is that you have two guard linemen. Yeah, I kind of got real lucky with that. Who did so, you that? Uh, I don't know. Well, I did... No spoilers, but we are a man down, so maybe I paid a tax afterwards. <laughs> but uh, I got uh, so my, my actually before the ogre game, I only had three levels, 
uh, or four levels. One of them was block on the Witch Elf, and then I had Mighty Blow and two guard as my other three uh, for the four. So I rolled... The early Mighty Blow is always nice. Yeah, and all three of those Mighty Blow, or all three of those doubles were mm -hmm. double fives. So I was really struggling. It's like, well, the guards were easy. Definitely take guard over plus movement, but I was like, eh, movement eight on a Blitzer is really nice. So, but I ended up going with the Mighty Blow just because mm -hmm. having that one player to have a mighty blow hit every turn as you blitz. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. Just uh, being kept in hindsight here, but imagine if you would have a stat line now, which is six players being seven, three, four, eight, and one of them being eight, three, four, eight. Yeah. Uh, I think I'd still take the guard just because with what we have in our division, um, uh, lots of undead, lots of uh, orcs and yeah, scary going, things and going dwarves. The, going the long develop, uh, developmental route might not be the best idea because you just might lose those players. Yeah. You need the guards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, a lot of a lot of what I took was based on what I thought I was mm -hmm. going to need for this season. Yeah, I, I think that's a good assessment. I mean, honestly, this guard is probably mo more useful right now than it'll be a season from now. Um, it'll always be useful, but. Right now is when you can conceivably keep up with those bash teams because they won't have a lot of guard yet. Yeah. And now I have three blodgers, so hopefully I can do some wonky elf stuff mm -hmm. so as well. All right. And um, now that you are here anyway, um, what team would you like to talk about this week? Uh, I would say let's talk about... Um... Have we done uh, Dorks of Duncan yet? Uh, let's see. We have not. Because that's the team I know the littlest about, so it'd be nice to take a look okay. at them. Let's go for the Trolls of Dorks of Duncan. Okay. Right there, the not-actually-dwarf-team. Enter team motto. <sighs> Come on. I say this every time. Put in the team motto properly. Maybe that's just his motto. <laughs> just don't judge him, Chaos Ubalu. Well, Either you way. know. <laughs> you know, any, anyway. Satan uh... <laughs> is not in the team already because we have a Claw Chalf. Mm hmm. Under the name of Zarkon Burnsoul. Wait, wait a second. These are default player names. Come on! Uh, they might be. They, they do look like it, though. I mean, he might just like names like that. I'm pretty sure these are default names. I just want to know why Marzar Fastfoot is uh, only movement four. He needs to get plus movement on that guy, like, that, pronto. That does feel like more of a Hobgoblin or Bull Center name, I have to admit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Doom hits the really awesome killer, has agility up, is now with mm -hmm. agility for Hobgoblin, you know, so he can more reliably get 30 players and then stomp on people, because he can dodge better. Mm -hmm. That's what you need. Yep. Like, this is actually... Getting setups on Hobgoblins is actually pretty good. Because they're really useful when you have them, but they don't really bloat your team because they don't l live very long. <laughs> um, you hear that's right, Gherkin. Your Hobgoblin, even though his agility fall and amazing, you better protect him because he's not going to live long. It doesn't matter how well you protect him. Hobgoblins always die eventually. <laughs> Often sooner rather than later. But not I always. I feel like it doesn't matter how much you protect anybody. All of the characters are going to die at some point. I mean, true. But like, even though the even though the caster of blocker takes more hits, generally it will have a longer uh, lifespan than the hob a hobgoblin on the team. And there unless are... you're fouling with him and he gets ejected every game, and that's what you should be doing. Yeah, fair. But you're probably not fouling too often with the Agi four hobgoblin, <laughs> unless you're trying to protect him. <laughs> I mean, you make a compelling argument. Just go for the team. <laughs> just go for the foul right before you score. Uh, exactly. Don't do it after. You, don't do it pitch. after you score. I don't think it's possible anymore. But also, you will get banned. Um, 
Okay. Uh, you also have uh, mighty blow guards, mm -hmm. guard these, and a block gold. Those are mm -hmm. extended players, but they help. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, for this team's level of development, I think this looks pretty good. Like it's only played five games, so this is okay. good development. It has yeah. a mighty blow guard chorf. It has another guard chorf. It has the claw guy, which is amazing. Uh, the only thing I would like to see is more SVP on the bull centaurs. Because uh, this looks to me like, uh, let's see, yeah, he's only scored one touchdown on both bull centaurs. So, that is, both of them combined have only scored one in five matches. So that tells me that he's probably not feeding them as much as he should be. Because bull centaurs are amazing, but they take a couple levels before they get amazing. They're kind of only okay as rookies. It's around level 3 where they start getting really good. Okay, so... Shall we go to leaderboard? I actually have one more team I want to look at. Oh, uh, yes. Then we will, we will jump on the leaderboard. And that team is... Uh, probably won't take too long. It's the Flat Earthers. <laughs> because I was looking at the teams and I realized, hey, I haven't done an in-depth look at that stunty ogre team. This needs to be fixed immediately. <laughs> well, uh, let's look at the very significant players then, which is the armor value uh, for Noblar, which mm -hmm. is a real MVP to have. Which is also Sorry really about that. Awesome, which is also really awesome to have is a uh, Agility 2 Noblar. Mm-hmm. They can get anywhere in a blade. I didn't do that one. <laughs> and then we have a Mystics game, Noblar. These are the best ones. There is a, a break tackle uh, Fat Earth Scientist, though. I mean, one of the things that this team has going for it, which I already said in one of the early episodes, is that they do have a really good situation where at any point now, they're going to get all their ogres leveled up for once. Mm -hmm. For one level. And then they can just, you know, start the party. Mm-hmm. Uh, out on everybody, get break tackle, or, you know, be that guy and get pile on everybody. I do think it's interesting, though, that uh, this team clearly has made several interesting plays with the Noblars. There's one that's inflicted an injury. There's one that did a pass at some point. Uh, I'm guessing Ocean is flat. Probably has lots of... Oh, only one touchdown, actually, so two MVPs. Is how that happened. So what you're saying is the real stars of this team aren't the yogurts. It's actually <laughs> not blast. Yes, exactly, but no. Uh, okay, so this is this team. I kind of want to see how it looks uh, in another few weeks. Because I think there will be more ogre level ups then. Yeah. Uh, but I really wanted to take a quick look at it now. Because I just could not stand the idea that there was a stunty team I hadn't looked at yet. Um, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that there's another stunty team which you're not talking about for one week. Yeah, no, that's just unacceptable. Uh, so on that note, let's look at the leaderboard. Uh, first place with five wins and one loss. They've played. They have played their week six game. Is nerves. That team is scary. Big Delaware with his uh, pump white, blotch mighty blow white, and guard doom guardians. Good old standard undead being amazing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Economy of scale, five wins. Mm -hmm. They so might take. A match. They might take the first place slot. They're playing uh, Rock Lobstrosity, and I told him that like somebody has to give these lizards a loss. But the one thing is about this lizardman team, they have not conceded a touchdown yet all season. Well, so, there's the first time for everything. Yeah, they are a tough, tough bunch and Furl has proven that he's a good coach yep like okay so here's the thing if he if he comes in first then great but don't let him do it without a single loss <laughs> without a what don't it's let him do it without him. a single loss <laughs> oh yeah somebody needs to somebody needs to take him down <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I was in that situation in my first season of Fre <laughs> freaking wave freaking wave <laughs> Anyway, back to this. Okay, so we have Dolphs of Duncan. 
Mm -hmm. Tree wins to draws. Uh, yep, the Chaos Dwarf team is doing pretty well for themselves as well. Uh, and then a shared spot, uh, a shared four spot, is for Orcs and Humans, the Eternal Enemies. All look no mm -hmm. play and draw that Psydeco experience. That was very good. You said it correctly. <laughs> Rock Lobstrosity and Fugu. <laughs> Fugu. I don't know. Is that how, how do you pronounce that though? That's what I want to know. How he actually pronounces Fugu. his name. Fugu. <laughs> Wait, that actually sounds familiar. Isn't that like a joke in Austin Powers? It might Pretty be. Pretty sure it is. Anyway. Uh, then going all the, going the rest of the way down the list, we have uh, Wood Elves United. Uh, the Rock and Sockums, you are tied with the Wood Elves in sixth place. Woo. Uh, then Dead Presidents. Who were a, a, a late addition, so they're actually doing pretty well for yeah, themselves. Late addition, they're really mm -hmm. themselves. Then we have Mystery Science Goats 3000, Red Run Rage, the Halfling team, which was also a late addition. Um, mammals of Unusual Size, Dauntless Unicorns, the Admin Game, and then finally the Ogres. The Admin Game basically is winning more games than the Ogres right now. So the Ogres is in last place, sadly. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know what Blood Bowl 2 does is if there's a tie, it just sorts it by whoever, by uh, when the team was created, essentially. Okay. It, uh, so the way Blood Bowl 2 displays tiebreakers is incorrect, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, however, I'm pretty confident that the Ogres have a worse... Uh, have a touchdown worse ratio. casualty and touchdown ratio than the admin squad, so... <laughs> this... <laughs> well, I mean, there is zero, and then there's negatives. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Hey, but that'll, that'll all change once the Fat Earthers get their game against the admin squad, because... Yeah, that's very true. Um... You look like so much touchdowns and uh, injuries, you won't even know. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, I think that's just about everything for this week. Any final thoughts? Uh, no, that should be it. Uh, Dwiggy, how about yourself? Uh, I would just say, you know, thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Oh, it was nice having you here as well. It's much easier. Up to, until you get to the point where you're starting to get in front of each other's way, it is much easier to carry on a a cast or anything like this with more people. There's less dead air to fill that way. <laughs> and it's also easy to just plan. Mm -hmm. Like it's very easy that somebody like has to do something so you're still, you know, with two people so we don't get wind up being alone basically. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're always looking for casters and whenever you want to have a casting job, just hit up Super Pet. Yep, or um, there's one other person you can talk to as well. Uh, well, for Rel, you should hit up Superfed anyway. Yep. But there are two headcasters. I just don't remember who the other one is. <laughs> Either way, this was RDL Division 9B and 9C. Mm -hmm. This has been Twix, Genga, and Kiyosibalu wishing you a good night. Yep, yeah, we've been Team Fable. Bye!